Guys, what is up? It's been a little while. It's time to share my thoughts and my final review on Valve's Steam Deck. First, we'll talk about the device, the hardware, and the stuff that comes in the box. Then we'll talk about gameplay, how it is to actually use the Steam Deck on a day-to-day -day basis. And then at the end, I'll break down my closing thoughts, my summary, my overall impressions, whether or not you should buy a Steam Deck, which if you haven't already seen, they're now readily available and shipping very quickly. There's no more pre-orders, no more wait lists. So first, let's start by talking about the deck itself, what comes in the box and what it's like to get hands-on with. And we have to start with, of course, the carrying case. Shout out to Valve for making the coolest yet worst carrying case I've ever seen for a mobile gaming device. This case is very strong, very well built, but it has no room for the charger. What kind of mobile gaming device with a two to three hour battery life doesn't have room for the charger in the carrying case? The only other things you get in the box with the deck are the charger and the deck itself. So first off, there's no hiding the fact that this is a chunky monster of a portable gaming device. This thing is heavy, it has significant weight. While it's in use, the fans do come on very quickly and it does get very hot. I personally have found myself not being able to really play it sitting down like I am right now and talking to you guys. Normally I have to prop it up like on my knee or against a pillow in between to have an ergonomic, comfortable gaming session. Otherwise, it just is too fatiguing. And there's so much to reach and so much movement happening that it does become a little exhausting to play over a long period of time, unless you do prop it up. Weight aside, you have controls for pretty much everything you could imagine, from joysticks to D-pad to essentially touch-sensitive mouse inputs. You've got, of course, your A, B, X and Y controls, you've eight triggers in total. <laughs> These back four are pretty much impossible to use if you're in a normal gaming position. It just, it's not really for me ergonomically friendly or natural to toggle these back guys, but these top toggles are excellent and they do cover the majority of in-game actions for the most part. At the center of the Steam Deck is of course this beautiful touchscreen, seven inches in diameter and 400 nits of brightness. I have used this inside, outside and while traveling in a car. But I think the screen is a pretty good brightness. Now in direct sunlight, not so ideal, but for the majority of use cases and again when you're playing games at least it's going to be just fine for you it is a fingerprint magnet though because again it does have touch interaction keep a little cleaning cloth with you at all times if you're taking the deck anywhere now while the deck looks good and for the most part feels good one of the biggest concerns i had when i became eligible to lock in my pre-order and actually buy this thing was build quality did valve do a good enough job with the build of the steam deck that it's going to last the test of time because in the several months I waited to get my pre-order locked in and confirmed, I saw nothing but piles and piles and piles of reports of Steam Decks breaking from the smallest of drops or the most random of interactions. I've been using mine for about a month. I haven't had any significant trouble with it whatsoever. A couple of software hiccups, but we'll talk about that. There are a couple of things that I have noticed right out of the gate. My D-pad is not centered on the device and it came out of the box like this. I don't know if you caught it in my initial unboxing and hands-on, but here's a close-up of that now. But all the other inputs are good. They seem totally fine and everything works. So maybe too soon to tell, this isn't exactly a battle tested Steam Deck here. And I bet you there are definitely people out there. And of course, with it being a portable device, there are going to be people that use it much more rigorously and in much different situations and circumstances than I have. It's kind of a question mark whether the deck is the most durable of mobile gaming platforms out there. And circling back to the charger again, I have found that my charge time averages about as long as the deck lasts, which is about two-ish hours. And my battery life average has been about two to two and a half hours. It comes down to the games I'm playing. It comes down to how I'm running those games quality wise. And it comes down to what I've got the brightness set to on the screen and what I've got the audio level set to. So this is probably a good time then to segue into the actual gaming experience on Steam Deck. What is it like to play? What is it like to use? I've really been playing only three games. I've installed a bunch, but the three that I've been playing the most are Asphalt Legends 9, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, an absolute gem of a 
classic that I used to love playing back in the day and have very much been enjoying playing on the deck and Apex Legends. All three run very well, but they also all run very differently. Asphalt Legends and CSGO are absolute buttery smooth. Regardless of the performance settings that I've set them on, they run awesome. They look good, they're super responsive, no really weird glitches or anything like that coming up well in the middle of a game in these two. Now, Apex Legends, things start to kind of fall apart. This is a, definitely a more resource intensive game, so the Steam Deck does start to sort of show its limitations in this particular environment. With Apex Legends, I find that getting into a lobby and actually dropping out takes a really long time. Most of the time you miss the entire segment because it is taking so long to load. Now, full disclosure, maybe this is just limited to my Steam Deck. As I mentioned in my initial hand unboxing and hands-on, I have the 64 gig base model. That means it only has the eMMC memory and it doesn't have the faster NVMe storage or SSD that the higher end decks have. So perhaps this is a limitation of my device's hardware rearing its ugly head. Now, once I do get into game for the most part, it works just fine. Apex Legends plays pretty well. Unless I'm cranking up the graphics performance on the deck itself, I don't find that the in-game interactions slow down too much. There's just a little bit of choppiness when you get into close combat with other people, but it doesn't shut down or completely ruin the gaming experience. On the whole, what I found while playing and gaming on the deck is that your experience will vary. Some stuff works, and when it works, as I said with Asphalt Legends 9, it works great. Some of the older games, of course, like CSGO, they work great. They're designed for old computer hardware, and now here on a modern platform like the deck, it runs awesome. But games designed for higher-end machines, newer machines, they sometimes don't. And another part of the gaming experience, too, is that even though it took months and months and months for me to go from the time of pre-order to actually confirming my purchase, the number of games available, at least the big titles, hasn't changed all that much. Classics like PUBG are still not available on deck, and it's been literally since day one that people have been talking about trying to get this game onto the deck. So if you're strongly considering getting a Steam Deck to play some of your favorite games from your Steam library, I highly recommend you do your research and check everything, not just to see if it, it runs on deck, but also that it is somewhat compatible and optimized for the deck. That also brings me into my other negative takeaway from playing games on the deck, mapping, of controls is completely different with every single thing you touch. And I know that you get this sometimes in desktop games, but at least for the most part, there is a uniform set of controls for different things. On the Steam Deck, it's not so much. You have to do a lot of custom mapping to really set everything up, or the defaults are completely different every time. For example, in CSGO, the controls to adjust the movement direction of your character and also the camera angle, you know, your axis, are completely different than on Apex Legends. And you would think that at the very least joystick control would be uniform across the board in first person shooters. Another thing is that some games take advantage of the gyroscope function of the deck, which is really cool when it works. Others just don't, which begs the question long term, what is the development roadmap for some of these games like? Are people going to spend the time to implement all of the controls? Are they going to take full advantage of the hardware, that sort of disconnected, not uniform experience is very jarring. I just felt like I had to completely relearn and take time every time I switched between one game to the next to remember how to play it, which I don't ever recall having to do on a PC before. Now, the other part of Steam Deck, of course, is desktop mode. And while I didn't spend a ton of time in it, this is where the deck absolutely is different. So you can pop into desktop mode whenever you want from the Steam OS or the normal Steam experience, connect up a mouse and keyboard, and you can literally use it as a computer. I haven't done it like that, but I have popped in, installed a couple of apps, play with them a little bit, then you can pop back into the normal Steam OS environment and go back to gaming. It's really cool to have Google Chrome and then be able to switch over and play a game and switch back. You've got the ability to run Linux, which is what desktop mode runs in, install whatever apps you want that run on Linux. Now, <laughs> not saying to do anything illegal, but there are a ton of things that this opens the door to in terms of emulation. And one of the also nice features is that once you do install certain stuff 
on desktop mode and you go back to SteamOS, it actually there is a section called non-Steam. And in this area, it shows you all of the apps you've installed in desktop mode and you can create shortcuts onto your SteamOS homepage so you can quick launch into Google Chrome, quick launch into your favorite emulator, quick launch into whatever other Linux-based apps you've installed. Depending on the kind of user you are and your comfortability using the Linux environment and what sort of apps you're looking to install, this totally opens up a new dimension to what mobile gaming could be. It's not without bugs, stuff crashes, but the possibilities are there. I see tons of opportunity for people to take advantage of this mode. And in the case where you maybe don't have a dedicated desktop gaming setup, use your own mouse, keyboard, controller, whatever you're looking for, the options are there. Now, I really still feel like even after all this time with DEC, I'm just starting to scratch the surface. The biggest downfall for me is the portability aspect of it. The Steam Deck without internet access is limited. A lot of these games, and I mean a lot, a lot, a lot of these games require an internet connection to be used, which of course makes sense because Steam is naturally a desktop computer application. It's expected to be on an internet connected device. The Steam Deck is no exception. On my time on the road, in the car, my use was very limited. I wasn't able to play or take advantage of the majority of features in games. Even some of the stuff on the SteamOS itself wouldn't work without an internet connection. But it's a modern time. The majority of people have access to Wi-Fi even when they're traveling, even on planes now. So this might not be a big downfall for you. But in my experience, your mileage is gonna vary in terms of portable gaming. So in summary, should you go and buy a Steam Deck? Because again, they are shipping right now. Well, I have enjoyed and am still enjoying my time with the deck. I think it's very capable. I think there's tons of things you can do with it. But while that is great, there are still a lot of things that kind of feel like a beta when you're using the deck. The lack of several leading titles like again, PUBG, the crashes, the occasional glitches, the fact that out of the gate, I already have some weird hardware stuff happening. Long term, I don't know what this device is gonna look like, how it's gonna hold up build wise, and if the software is gonna continue to be rolled out, if games are gonna continue to be released. I don't think I need to be the first to tell you that Steam has done hardware before and has completely abandoned it after a very short period of time. The Steam Deck is still in its infancy. It's still relatively new. It's not really possible for anybody to tell you whether or not this device in two years time is still gonna be supported, getting games released on it, getting software updates to keep things running smoothly, and if the build is any good, really, for the long term. It's a really cool device and it's a lot of fun to game on. There are shortcomings with this current version of Steam Deck from the weight to the extreme heat that comes off of this thing in game to the fact that the battery is only a couple of hours in terms of lifespan to the fact that you can't put the charger in the carrying case. It's not a perfect device. It's not a perfect iteration, but for a V1, it is pretty damn good. If this is the kind of thing you're into and you're not afraid of the bleeding edge to jump into beta-like products, then it's probably worth giving the Steam Deck a shot for yourself. Thanks for watching this very long, hopefully very detailed dive of Steam Deck. Let me know what you guys are thinking, if you guys have it, if you guys love it, if you guys hate it. Let's have a conversation down in the comments and we'll see you guys soon in the next one.